Hey everyone, welcome to Popo's Workshop. If this is your first time here, I welcome you and I hope that you'll take the opportunity to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. We do a lot of different types of different projects in the shop and today is no different. But I am back at the CNC machine working today to be able to create a wall art sign that says, In God We Trust. Now, the reason that I'm doing that is there are many schools that are actually requiring that this year, and I want to be able to set this up for the teachers in my family, and I'm going to make this first one so that they can see it and see if they want to put it into their room. I started out my search, as I do with many of the different projects, by going to Google Images and looking for the different uh, logos that are available. And there is a wide range of different ones to choose from. And this is one that I had looked at, but I continued on with my search. After several minutes of looking through all of the different logos, I came to the conclusion that, quite frankly, I could just create my own. And that's what I decided to do. The logo that I found that I actually kind of like was this one right here. But I did not want to just copy this one. There was a lot of issues with the background and different elements that would have required a ton of work to be able to get cleaned up. So I decided to create my own using the VCAR Pro. I think this is going to be a lot easier. So I'm going to start out and just create a new file. So I'm going to open up a brand new window. And from here, I'm going to be setting this up on a single sided uh, job type. And I want to make this sign roughly 24 inches by 24 inches. I'm going to be using some thin material. So 0 0.20 is the thickness that I'm using, and that is in inches. I'm also using a material surface for my Z0 position, and I'm setting this up where I'm using the XY0 position in the center of my project. So with that all being set up, I'll just hit uh, the OK, close this out, and now I have my workspace. This whole entire project is done using the text icon. And I'm going to do this in sections. I'm not going to type out the whole word to begin with. But the first word that I'm going to do is just simply type in God, because that is going to be the focal point of the whole entire sign. I'm using the Times New Roman for the text, because I believe that was a similar uh, text that they had used in the original sign. So I'm going to bring that up close to the center, and we'll start working with it from here. And you notice as I bring it up, it all comes together as one word. I need to convert this over. Now, what I need to be able to do is split this out and change the sizes of the letters. So I need to take this and convert it to the curves. So I'll click on this, and now I have individual letters that are actually no longer technically letters, but they're actually curves that I can actually work with now. The largest letter is the G in God. So I'm going to Grab the handle on the corner, bring this up to roughly this size. I don't know the actual size yet because I'm going to have to work with all the words once I get this close. I'll take these two letters and expand these out and get those approximately where I want them. Then it's back over to the text menu and let's get the next word. This time I'm going to type in the word in, I -N, and I'll bring that in. And then I'll set that up exactly the same way that I did with the G-O-D for God. So when it comes in, it comes in, of course, as text. Then it's back over to this icon to convert it over to the curves. And of course, that now will separate this out, and I have individual letters that I can work with. I'll move this down to the approximate location and resize them. It's important to note that this is not the final placement of the letters. Because quite frankly, I think the O and the D is going to be too big, and the I and the N, of course, is going to have to be resized. All I want to be able to accomplish at this point is get an approximate location. Once I have all of the letters into this workspace, then I can actually start moving them around and actually placing them exactly where they need to be. Because the actual size of the letters and the placement of the letters will need to be done once all of the letters are into my project area. That way I can move them around and adjust them and adjust the size and the placement to have it correctly done. The last word that I need to type out is the word trust. And remember the T is the largest letter 
in this word. So that will be uh, the cornerstone of this part of this sign too. And of course the steps are exactly the same. Once I have the word, we're going to convert it over to the curves. And then with this split out, I'll take the letter T and make it quite large, bring it up to approximately where it needs to be. And then I can take the RUST, I'll keep these together for right now, and move those over to approximately where they need to be and size them accordingly. Now, with all of these letters in place, now we can actually start adjusting and moving things around to be able to get it to work. So what do I mean by that? Well, these are individual letters, and they have to be able to touch one another, at least in many of the different locations for this sign to be able to stay together. Now, in other signs that I've done where I've used script text, for example, you can see in this the word believes is all touching already because it was script. But you still have to be able to adjust the letters in this house where those letters are actually touching. And that's what has to be done with this sign. All of these letters need to be grouped together in such a way that they all work as an entire whole. So the G and the T are actually joined together. It's also important to take the entire sign and size it according to the project board that you have. That way you have the approximate location of the largest words. From there you can manipulate the different letters and place them exactly where they need to be by the placement and or the size of the letters and make sure that they overlap. So for an example, the T and the G overlap. The I and the N overlap into the O. Now, it can't be carved this way. You have to do one more thing. Take the little scissors and you have to clip these components out. And that way, you're going to create some nice smooth tool paths. So this is important to do on all of the different areas as you go through the entire sign. Same thing here with the G and the T. We'll clip this out and join this into one path for the tool to be able to use. And we'll do the same thing over here with the W and the O. We'll just open all of that up. And then once you go through and complete this process, then we can convert this over to the tool pass. Now if you click the wrong thing, that's okay. Just get out of this and we can do the redo and back this out so you can recover the letter that was lost. And then go back, pick up the scissors in your little clip tool, and you can come back in and clip the right um, line that you need to be able to delete. The T is basically standing alone at this point, and that won't work. You have to be able to slide that over to be able to have it touch the S. So we'll click on this, slide it over, and attach it right over on top of the S, just like that. And then we'll come back with the clip tool and do the same thing. Remove those little components out to get rid of those lines. But this is an important step to make sure that all these letters are overlapping and touching to be able to give support to the whole entire sign. So we'll go back, take the clip tool, clip this out, and that now is joined together. And of course, we have to do the same thing with the R in trust. So I'll just grab it and we'll move it over and attach it to the other letters. Once you have everything exactly the way that you want it, we're ready to be able to create the tool pass. So we open up the tool path menu and I want to use the uh, profile tool path to be able to do this. We are going to be cutting all the way through the material. If you recall, it was 0.2 of an inch. I'm using an eighth inch end mill. And this currently is set for four passes. Really don't need to do that. We can edit this down to two passes. We'll work just fine for this very thin material. So we'll click that. And we want to make sure that we cut on the outside of the letters. I do like to have the ramp set up. So I'll click on the ramp and I'll use the setting that's already in there. And I'll hit calculate. And let's take a look at the tool path that's being generated using this eighth inch bit. And now you can take a look and see exactly what this sign is going to look like. Now the other things you can do too is double click on the unused portion. 
and you can actually get rid of all those different little dropouts and you can see the actual sign the way it's going to look. So let me double click on that R and we'll get that out of the way also. That looks fantastic. Whoops, missed the end. So there we go. That has all of the different elements out of it. This sign looks exactly the way that I want it to. I want to take just a moment and run the actual simulation and you can see how this tool is going to take care and of all the cutouts first. Once those are done, then it will cut the outline. And if you've done everything correctly, that outline is all one continuous line. Those dropouts are just that. They will drop out, they cut first, and we have a completed sign. This absolutely looks fantastic. So now let's save the toolpath and get it out onto the CNC machine and get this sign cut. I'm using the bump stops to be able to have a reference point for this sign. Now it's important to note, guys, I'm getting ready to go through and completely replace this waste board and put in a brand new system to be able to hold down and secure the projects when I cut out onto this CNC machine. I am using the glue and the tape method to be able to hold this project and the bump stops, quite frankly, really aren't necessary. They're just an easy way to be able to make sure that everything stays square while I'm setting this up and putting the project board onto the waste board. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I use the glue and the tape method to hold down most of the projects that I do. Also, I'll always put the tape down onto the board first. And I'm using four pieces of tape just to be able to get the alignment fairly close to be able to have the dropouts for these different uh, letters to be able to hold them in place. If I miss and don't have it perfectly aligned, that's not going to really be a big thing. I don't use the tabs. I also use the tape as my reference point also to make sure that the tape on the wasteboard gets aligned too. Once I have all the tape down, then I'll use the Starbond medium glue. And it doesn't take much. Just one quick little bead all the way across the tape. That's all that's necessary. Far too many times I've seen different people use way too much tape and way too much glue. It doesn't take much at all. Now, quite frankly, if I didn't have the dropouts on these letters, I would even use perhaps two pieces, maybe three pieces of the tape at the most. And that would hold just fine. Now I'm going to spray just a little bit of accelerator onto this tape and then I'll place the project board onto my waste board. And this is where I use the bump stop just to help get everything aligned. I know my tape is already aligned but you really can't see it. But I do have the bump stops. I press it down into place only takes just a few seconds for this to bond and I'm ready to start the carving. Now don't forget we're using the center point of this project to be able to have my X, Y, zero position. If you saw the recent sign that I made with the Starbond logo and uh, we were talking about the letters being a different size, well here's the culprit. This portion of the waste board was raised up so it was cutting deeper into that sign. There's my one millimeter, and it was caused by those two little screws holding that bump stop down. That's another reason that I'm going to completely redesign this waste board and have a whole new hold down system. So that's coming real soon. But for now, let's get back to this video. And the first step, of course, is to home the machine. Crazy as it sounds, I forgot to mark the center of the project board. So I'll do that right now. Because remember, I'm using the center point of this project board as my X, Y home or work position. It takes just a moment to jog the machine over to that location that I had just marked. So now I have my X, Y, zero position right in the center of the project board. Once I'm happy with the location, I'll go over to the open build software and I will click on set the zero position on my x-axis and the y-axis. The only thing that's left now is to take care of the z-axis. So I'll use the probe to set that. Now this probe is something that I had made. It doesn't take a lot to do and it didn't cost anything. I know it's 3.11 millimeters thick. 
I have it in position, so I just click on probe and it will go through the operation. And now the Z axis is set. I have the file loaded. You can see the center point as my start point. The only thing is left, let me turn on the router and hit run job. As you watch this cut out, you notice the little dropouts are being removed. I chose to do that on purpose, but you can see this little pick that I'm using just to break it loose from the tape. And at this point, all of those are now completed and I'm starting to cut out the outline itself. And remember, this is one continuous line that's going to go all the way around the entire project. This is what really makes this sign come to life. I can hardly wait to see this finished. But if you look at how this letter is being formed, this is actually running at the normal speed. And I wish I had recorded the actual inches per minute or millimeters per minute, but I think it's somewhere around 1,500 to 2,000 millimeters per minute. To me, this is a lot of fun to watch. I could literally sit here and watch this process all day long as it cut out these letters. But I know from your viewpoint, you probably say enough's enough. So here you go. This completes that first path, and now it's completing the second one, and it's all done. So I'll take this, move the gantry out of the way, and it's time to remove this from the, from the waste board itself. And this, too, is very rewarding to be able to break this glue joint loose and pop this up and get this out of the way. And all of this comes out as one big piece. And that tape and the glue really holds well. So this is out of the way now, and the actual sign is still taped to the waste board. Now this one is very thin. We have to be careful with this one to get the glue and the tape broken loose from the sign. So I'm just lifting very carefully because I don't want to take a chance on breaking the sign. But once everything is loose, then I can just lift this off the waste board as one piece. Now this will take just a little bit of sanding and get it ready for paint. After getting all of this sanded, I set this up outside to build a spray paint. Any time that I can, with the weather permitting, I always take my projects outside to build a spray paint. And of course, I wear the mask. You want to be able to protect your lungs. But I'm just using a dark navy blue paint to be able to spray this sign. And I want to be able to take my time and get it covered all the way around because those edges will show, so you have to spray from all different angles. And even after you think you got it all done, look it over one more time just to make sure because, quite frankly, you'll probably have missed a few places. I like the way this sign turned out, and I love doing projects like this. This type of wall art, to me, is a lot of fun and very rewarding. After the paint dried, I wanted to set this up so you could see exactly what it looks like. I do think it turned out fantastic. You let me know in the comments below. I want to thank everybody for watching this video today. It was a lot of fun to be able to design and carve this sign. Now, if you like this video, by all means, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification down below. I would really appreciate it. It helps out the channel an awful lot and be able to help this channel to grow. Now, one of the things that I mentioned in the video is I'm going to be updating this waste board on this CMC machine real soon, and you're not gonna to wanna to miss out on that. So I hope you did take the opportunity to uh, subscribe. Although there are many different designs out there, I'm gonna to try to do something a little bit unique that is going to work well in my shop and perhaps it'll work well in yours. So for now, I'm going to say bye-bye. Look forward to seeing each one of you in the shop real soon.